Good evening, <laughs> podcast world and all those out on Facebook Live. Say hey, Jamie. Hey, how's everybody doing? All right. We got another special show for you. Yes, we do. Carolyn, get ready. We about to do this thing. <laughs> 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 we're going we gonna to read your bio and then we're going to ask you a few questions. We're going to let you tell this story. I can uh, take a nap while y'all read my bio. Then. Yeah, yeah. Now look, y'all out there, y'all out there if, you, if somebody, if you're out there listening now, you get ready, strap in. It's going to take a minute to read this bio. <laughs> we have my dear Russell Presley, Carolyn Baker from the General Baker Institute in Detroit, Michigan. Carolyn is an educator, organizer, and community leader. She is part of the popular education project, EED, Network of Social Movement Educators. She is also one of the coordinating uh, CMTE of the Michigan Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival. Carolyn was born and raised in Highland Park, and she's a graduate of Virgin High School. How about that? All right, let's welcome. <laughs> let's welcome Ms. Carolyn Baker. Hey, hey, Carolyn. Hey, thank y'all for having me. <laughs> thank, thank you for coming on. Yeah. Uh, a, a couple of things I, I want to uh, say. One, Highland Park. You like the third, third person, the fourth person we've had yeah, on from Highland Park. Park. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out, shout out to the, the city in the city. The and all, heart of Detroit. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you that. Okay. Because you, you're a guest and you're my cousin. I'll let you have that. <laughs> and, and, you, and you went to Persian, did you not? Yes, Persian. All right. So, so shout out to that. Yeah. You know, we always we always like to stress, especially if we have guests who went to Detroit Public Schools. I am DPS. <laughs> yes. Because we want we want folks to know that DPS is out here doing it. They're, they're not, not out here being nobodies, as some people would want to say. <laughs> So okay. what we want to talk about today, you know, usually we just talk about our guests, but we want you to talk about the General Baker Institute. So I want you to just start in, just start talking about that. Tell, get the folks a little background on, on GBI, and uh, then we'll ask you a few questions, but you start filling us in. Yeah, so first, I guess General Baker um, was my father. Um, he passed away. And after he passed, uh, my mom's idea was to start an institute um, to hold on to his legacy. He was a part of, he was a labor organizer in the city of Detroit. And um, he was big on uh, like political and popular education um, as part of his work. But, you know, and I guess he was also, some folks call him a revolutionary. Um, <laughs> and so he had many names. So, um, but yeah, so we decided, um, my mom decided, I would say we decided, my mom decided mm -hmm. that we should start a General Baker Institute after he passed. Um, and so when we did that, um, our ideas were mainly about um, having classes um, and doing an oral history project, recording videos of those who uh, were a part of the history that my parents come out of and the work that they come out of, trying to get their stories before they passed. And so many people have written books off of those story about their stories. So many people have made money um, telling these folks a story, but none of them had a, had a chance to like really tell their story. And so that was the goal when we first started of the Institute. And to um, be a, a to do education for the community, and be a spot for scholarships too for young folks. Um, so we started doing those things, and we were doing a lot of educationals out of the Charles Wright Museum, um, and we started the oral history project as well. Um, but then, uh, as we kept organizing, and people and our name was getting out there. Uh, first of all, there was a lot of folks at my dad's memorial. Yes, um, there were. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they had a lot of friends, and they were my dad and my mom, um, known like internationally as well. And so we were able to. Um, a lot of people just wanted to figure out how to give back, how to help. And so uh, 
the generous support of their friends and people who they didn't necessarily knew but were impacted by them, we were able to get a space, uh, actual physical space, mm -hmm. which came right on time because we were kind of like forced out of the right museum, not just us, but a lot of programs were because mm -hmm. they had change in leadership. And our cousin, Charles Farrell was there. Yes. And so um, a lot of programs that he had started got moved out of there, shifted out of there. So we were one of those. And so it came right on time that we were able to get this, the place that I'm sitting in now, the Institute, General Baker Institute. Right. Um, yeah, and, and so that expanded kind of our, our, it had to, our ideas around the Institute had to shift a little bit because now we have this physical location. You know? and, and let me interrupt you real quick. For anybody who doesn't know, because you just had a grand opening on Labor Day, correct? Correct. And yeah. and 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 if I if my memory serves me correct, your building is the old Mays Printing Company. Yes. On Illinois. Yes, so so on Illinois. right. So if anybody's familiar with with that location, that's where the General Baker Institute is. So, yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Right next to Uptown Barbecue. <laughs> <where we are. laughs> um, yeah. Um, so yeah, we had a, we were going to have a grand opening. What? A year is it a year ago or so i don't know the height of COVID mm -hmm. that hit and then we had to postpone everything um but yeah so we had the opening um on labor day like you said um but our we have four pillars that we're built off of um that is internationalism projects of survival arts and culture and political and popular education okay. so that's our four pillars here um and so we're we're still a print shop. We do, I was just over here doing printing. When I say printing, we do small like uh, screen printing, vinyl printing, um, small little pamphlets, just a little printing like that as well. Uh -huh. And we try to connect with the community um, to try to fulfill some of the needs that they might be interested in doing like little um, projects themselves. They can come over here. And uh, if they're into t-shirt design, clothing design, they can come over here and try to it's just a small start start up of right, getting right. them off the ground. Okay, and so and so I'm sure later on you'll you'll give them uh, information on how to get in contact with you to uh, do that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, like what else? Can... Yeah, we like I said, we we do we hold classes here um, as well. Um, with we partner with U of M a lot, semester in Detroit. My mm -hmm. dad, before he passed, would speak there a lot. And they currently have a scholarship in his name. Um, and so Semester in Detroit bring buses students to Detroit. Before COVID, they were busing students to Detroit where once a week and they would have to come and listen to whatever the topic was, the curriculum was. It was based off of like grassroots organizing and they would come listen to those folks who um, are doing the organizing and get a feel for Detroit in that way um from Detroiters and so yeah so we partner with them on a every semester okay. so we hold those classes we hold our own classes here I'm inside what we call the ghetto coffee shop yes. um, <laughs> <laughs> which was the actual location in the city of Detroit back in the 60s um where they would hang out and and we only heard stories about it <laughs> um and it wasn't until because we have an archive here it wasn't until um we were going through the old newspapers, the inner city voice newspapers of my um, of the organization okay. that my parents were a part of, that we got to see exactly, like it was a whole write up about the ghetto coffee shop. Right. It was located on uh, Grand River, not far from the TLC. Uh, uh, okay. And uh, it was just a spot where they hung out, played conga drums, had poetry, played chess. Um, and upstairs was the office of the inner city voice. A newspaper um and also in that place upstairs i guess was an assassination attempt on my dad too oh, um, wow. so um but they missed they shot the wrong person uh. um they shot fred Lyles, who was then paralyzed but um so all those things happened at the ghetto coffee shop and and we kind of reclaimed that name here and we call this space in the middle the ghetto coffee shop and uh we podcast from here and everything so um but yeah right and so uh, you know i was looking at so your, your podcast run what is it, uh once a month yeah i guess <laughs> well no um i we only did one episode <laughs> that was just of uh, my dad um at 
it's more so him talking. I have, we have a lot of clips of him talking. Um, and so we want to get a lot of those out first, okay. but we, yeah, eventually, I guess we're going to interview people too. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So right so, now you just, right. You just play, you just uh, broadcast on pi- on the podcast sites. Is that where you have it? Yes. On SoundCloud on okay. the general Baker Institute. And that's the first episode of him talking about his trip to Cuba and his politicalization that he gained going to Cuba. Okay. How did you really become interested? Was it just going out with your dad, or? Uh, well, my, my so my mom is Marion Kramer. Uh, she's still alive. She's a with Michigan Welfare Rights. She's a national chair of National Welfare Rights Union, mm-hmm. and um, and so all of us like we went to protest growing up. That was okay. like that was our family outings, <laughs> um, <laughs> and and then like we play you know some people young kids play play games to emulate life some someone play house we play meetings we (laughs) pretend to have meetings and so (laughs) with other kids and so that was our life so I mean um you know we always I was just like I was a dad's girl too okay so but Labor Day was like one of his favorite holidays we had to go to the march and parade every get wagons if my mom was late, like taking too long out the house, he would just leave her. And like, he was serious about Labor Day. He'd just take his car and like, I'll just meet you down there. He's so frustrated. So, um, but yeah, I mean, that's how I just grew up in it. <laughs> so, you got another thing? No, I was, I wanted to ask you, do y'all still do that semester in Detroit? Yeah, we do. Um, yeah, we did it online last year. Um, we're trying to figure out this year because I think all the students are back uh, in person. So okay. they're trying to figure out the details now for it. Especially when I was uh, reading, and when I went out there on the site and I was looking at uh, Jamin Jordan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jamal, yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, I didn't know he was part of that uh, Black Squirrel Network. And I was like, you know, because people always, been, I've been trying to get out there for at least three years ago just to do it because, like you said, your family come here, you be like, oh, we don't go to the Motown. We want to no, I mean, it's just so much stuff. And I was like, and not only that, we can get exercise. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then to find out that he was the one in charge that he had that little. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's awesome. And how did you pronounce his name? It's Jamon Jordan. Jamon Jordan. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I did the Silver Right activist. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, so you said that the uh, institute is formulated on four pillars, right? Mm-hmm. And so you, you talked about one of them. Could you just briefly talk about what each one of those pillars means? Yeah, so it's based, so I guess, so internationalism, understanding our struggles are connected to the international struggles around the world. Um, poverty doesn't just exist in one space. Poverty exists all throughout the world. And so I'm just using poverty as example, but we got climate change. We got um, just the system of capitalism uh, is an international system. And so, um, so if you think that you're just gonna win the fight against capitalism, just fighting at home, that's not true because it's international fight. And so that's, um, that's what I mean by international. That's what we mean by internationalism. Right. Right. And then uh, projects of survival um, connect. How are people under the system of capitalism? How are people surviving? Um, what are some of the things that they're doing? Uh, you see folks doing uh, uh, this hunger issue. People are finding other ways to feed and not through charity necessarily through charity, but just off of their own. Like you see gardens, you see cooperative societies that people are trying to build just so they can stay afloat. Um, And uh, issues with water, um, like you can't survive without water. So if you you do have lead in your water, what are things that people are doing, communities are doing when there's have uh, issues with water? Um, So that's projects of survival. And then, um, and so just learning from each other uh, coming up by ideas so people can survive. And then um, uh, political and popular education, understanding the system, understanding historical movements, ways 
understanding the lessons from those movements, uh, what were some of the victories, what were some of the losses, um, uh, systems, how are we governed, why are we gov governed, understanding all of those. Um, uh, and then uh, what else did I say? Oh, arts and culture, um, understanding that um, arts and culture is what drive movements. Um, you hear that through song, through images. Um, and so those are the four pillars. And so I guess propaganda through all four of those pillars um, is what we were trying to do. Okay. And I know uh, you talked about the, the uh, public, public community garden. And I, mm -hmm. and I know you have a garden space over there, right? Trying yeah. to get one together. Yeah. 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 So how, how does that work? And what's the plan for it? Oh, it just started over COVID. Um, yeah, it's a lot next to, in between us and the other uh, spaces. And we just uh, put up um, some, some garden beds um, through COVID and, and people and young, younger people have come and help with the garden and, and people in the neighborhood are able just to, there's no, if you think about the amount of grocery stores mm -hmm. um, in this neighborhood, particularly, um, of Lebanon that are walkable, you know, that you can walk to, or just stores, period, that you can walk to, and what, are, what, what is the produce like? It's ridiculous. Um, and so, uh, if there is produce, if it's not just processed food, and so right. having fresh foods um, is a way um, that we wanted to introduce ourselves to the community. And, and so not it just being, I always say this, not just being charity, like people understanding like why this is a necessity not something that we think that gardens are going to be the answer to ending right, right. starvation or something like that but um understand like not just take from it if people come in if you you can take something but help it help it out as well like there's a root that needs to be pulled pull that root some weeds that need to be pulled pull those weeds and this is something that we all put into um and not just take from okay Right. So, so it's right. So not only, I, I guess with, with all the pillars, it's not just that, that we need to do something, but in educating the people on why we need to yeah. do something. And yes. then, and then of course, like a cooperative, everybody pitching in to do their part to make sure that it, it keeps moving. Yeah. And not people just doing stuff because it makes them feel good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting up here about to eat some whole beans that I got from one of the Diamond's <laughs> garden now. I just right. up today. Oh, afternoon. see. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely. <laughs> right. So, what, I mean, I know uh, the, the ghetto coffee shop, you talked about the history of it and, and you talked about that you, that there's a podcast that you're trying to, you got one episode out, you're trying to get it going. What is the, the, the long range vision for the uh, ghetto coffee shop? Man, we, it's just like, I guess it's, you start off with one idea, but when you have a, a space that's your own, like, yeah. it's like the boundaries, you, you create these boundaries for yourself, but you don't need to. We would love to do one of my goals in particular, I've been trying to convince everyone and organize everyone else around this was, you know, um, our own version of Tiny Desk. Um, uh -huh. we wanted to do something like that. Just sounds from the ghetto coffee shop, okay. um, and like go live and have people playing music. Cause I, it's like the middle of the building. It's the heart of the building. Right. Um, so that's one thing, um, we, in the ghetto coffee shop, we have, uh, there's, there's been natural discussions that had just happened here in this area of the building, intergenerational discussions, debates. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a lot of literature. Here is not a, not a circulating like we have a library it's non circulating, mm -hmm. and we also have an archive. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's just information here. I go get a coffee shop. We have also GBI. We started a clothing line too during the pandemic. And so, like one of our our shirts or the way it's called popular ed threads, and the way we try to raise money is to um, uh, ask, ask for donations for these shirts um, that we make that have meaning tied to it so people can learn something mm -hmm. and wear it. You can just, so it's an image of the, I don't even have it in front of me, but the ghetto coffee shop image. Um, 
and then they get a little card to tell them the historical meaning of the ghetto coffee shop. So, um, yeah, it's just. Right. And, and so you t- when you said the image, you're talking about like the, little, the logo of it? Yeah, the logo. Yeah. I'm, thinking, I'm about to try to do something because I was just out look at the website <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking at uh, uh, things. I usually that- have stuff around here. Um, right because it's a lot of it's a lot of nice images if, if anybody you know wants to see for yourself there's a, a oh, general yeah. Bank institute has a website yeah. and and uh people need to go out there and, and, and read what's available and then also do something <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 about to do something crazy so you got you another question for me Oh yes, um, you know, you were part of the uh, PE project. What is that about? Popular Education Project. It's a um, it's a collective of move folks who are involved in different movements nationally mm-hmm. and internationally, um, and educators with the goal of doing education about like what it, uh, particularly like the institute. I said the understanding the systems, understanding historical movements and revolutions and. And so it's a collective of individuals. Okay. And you're also a coordinator of the Michigan Poor People's Campaign? Yeah, so the Poor People's Campaign and National Call for More Revival uh, kicked off. Um, it's in response to King's Poor People's Campaign in 1968. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the reason why King was assassinated was because of that campaign trying to bring together poor whites and poor blacks. and poor Latinos, poor natives. Um, and so, and he was killed uh, just uh, a few days, a few weeks before he was supposed to, they were supposed to go to DC, you know, the campaign continued and went to DC uh, without him. But yeah, so uh, the national chairs are Reverend William Barber out of North Carolina and Reverend uh, Liz Theo Harris um, out of the Cairo Center. So yeah, and so it's, we have uh, state chapters all over um, and we can participate in nonviolent civil disobedience. And uh, here in Michigan in particular, um, during the 40 days, I, it seems so long ago now, was it four years ago now? I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, we had um, in simultaneous action with uh, over 35 states um, uh, for 40 days where, Every Monday, we did civil disobedience either at the at um, the state houses or um, actually the last Monday here in Detroit, they took over the queue line uh, okay. and Dan Gilbert's playground downtown, and so um, at Quicken Loans, and so that was what the campaign did here. But yeah, so I'm a part of the Michigan Coordinating Committee of the Poor People's Campaign, which fights around ecological devastation. Um, it fights around poverty, the, uh, the religious moral narrative. Yeah, there you go, ghetto coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> That's our logo. <laughs> um, yeah, and so in racism, systemic racism. Um, so showing that all these evils are connected. Um, mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I'm part of the Poor People's Campaign, currently fighting around this voter. Oh, um, yeah, big issue. Yeah, so. Right, that's crazy. And so what, what is the, the next big thing, if I can ask that? The next big thing, I guess mm-hmm. we're gearing up for these evictions that are about to take place. Um, uh, and uh, try to, not only that, this uh, World Economic Forum uh, that is coming to the city of Detroit and mm-hmm. And the language that they're trying to use to bring that here, um, they try to make it seem like it's a good thing for Detroiters. Um, and so, um, and they, they're gonna be using a lot of language like private public partnership. Um, um, so yeah, that's, and it's backed by bedrock and like, like the we're just losing all together. So just trying to educate people around this economic forum that's coming. And it's not in the interest of us. Um, and so that, and then also the 
like I, I was saying, the evictions that are about to happen and the water shutoffs that are probably about to start happening again after the right. election. Um, so trying to gear up for that because it's going to be a lot of people struggling, a lot of people, uh, and it's getting cold and DTE with the, um, you know, they, that's another beast. And so, yeah, gearing up for this winter, trying to gear up for these fights and figuring out how people are going to survive. Right. So, so it's not one big thing. It's a lot of big things. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that's the problem. So we want to try to get people to understand fighting the uh, causes and not the effects. And okay. so, because when we start fighting all the effects, we'll be spread apart fighting this fight, that fight, and that mm-hmm. fight. But what is causing all of these things? Okay. So education, educating, like I go back to educating people on the yeah. system and how they keep us divided. And so- that's always key. That's always the big thing. But um, just trying to do the propaganda, telling people what's going on and what's about to happen. Okay. Okay. Well, you say it so soft-spoken. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you have such a soft voice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she, she expected, because you know your father wasn't soft-spoken. Right, no, he was. Like he was actually was. Like, it's so funny. Whenever he had to speak, he was loud. Right. Yeah. But he was so he was. Cool. But uh, but other than that, yeah, he was soft spoken. What are we talking about in the? Uh, yeah. It, it went when he was like if like if he was talking right now, he wouldn't be as as low key oh. as you are. Yeah, you just. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I expect a little bit more volume. Yeah, let's, let's, more put more. That, let's put it that. Let's put it that way. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna segue real quick, and I'm gonna ask you this question. We're gonna like we're gonna uh, we're gonna put you on the spot. Okay. And, and so I told you about the the question we always ask our guests. So so because I know your your, your mom and she had a whole lot of stuff with you. Yeah. <laughs> so is is there something that you discovered uh, in your journey that she didn't share or didn't prepare you for? Yeah, the amount of talking I would have to do. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, those protests, girl. <laughs> yeah, I'm cool being at a protest and being in the back, you know, <laughs> getting people hyped. Mm-hmm. But as far as talking, like, and the amount of, like, if you're building relationships, and like, how you have to just, a lot of that is around talking. <laughs> yes. And so, yes. Um, yeah, she didn't tell me that. Like, because I'm just, if I don't have to talk, I won't. Um, I'd rather just do and be in the background, see what, figure out, read the room, see what needs to be done. Right. I'm a, a reader like that. I guess that's the way I coach too. I just read, try to see what needs to happen, what's wrong, and then figure it out that way. So the amount of talking. <laughs> you are an educator. What do you mean amount of no, see, I don't. No, no, we do political education, but I find out who's the best, better educator to go do the education. You a facilitator? Yeah. <laughs> because the right voices in the room. That's right. <laughs> but but what oh, else? Yeah, that, that stems with the coordinating yeah. part. Yeah. But okay. but you know, but you know, it, you know, my background falling off. But for me, if if I, if I had my druthers, I probably wouldn't talk much either. Yeah. But but I discovered years ago that you sometimes you just don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so that's that's so now I, you you almost can't shut me up. <laughs> almost. So what do you like to do in your spare time? Oh man, I'm a big fan of The Walking Dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> huge fan I'm of The scary Walking of Dead. It. I, see, I'm yeah. scared of it. Yeah, I'm scared of it. I love. Uh, Love it, love it. And then um I play video games. I love playing video really? games okay. to escape and uh camping. Uh new love for camping. But I think that's tied to the walking dead. Um, <laughs> yeah, Why, because you think they're coming. No, just like how can you survive, you know, okay. survival? Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a closet prepper. Prepper, is that what you call it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so you so you got your gallons of water and your not can- necessarily yeah no uh yeah yeah no. <laughs> you got a few things yeah oh and, and, that, and that's okay that's you know okay. all the bunkers are <laughs> yeah 
so <laughs> so when they so when they start acting up crazy so when covid hit you did you get cut short with your supplies or, uh, uh, no i already had supplies yeah see so there you go yeah so, so that worked out when everybody else was running to the store trying to find toilet paper you had toilet paper no, I had it. I was selling it. It's like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 I had it. <laughs> right. right. You know, a lot of people do watch this show. We small, but we get a lot of people watch it. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're fighting for an end of capitalism, but we're still in a capitalist system. So I still had to sell some. <laughs> I had to play the game too sometimes. Well, yeah, you got to survive, not, right? We're not capitalists, but we need that bread is what we like to say. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You can't do without it. So, so, uh, segue back again. So, your sister is doing Zumba. You, you, the Sunday's open for that. Yep, she does Zumba every. Is it every Sunday? Every Saturday. Sorry, every Saturday at ten o'clock. Yep. And then there's other programs that's gonna kick off, like some yoga. Um, currently, right now, there's someone doing music. Um, it's more like a meditation music, like for an hour where people can come just chill, chill out, listen to some live music. So, um, so, so, so there's somebody that's playing music. Is the mm -hmm. same, per it's the same person every, uh, every time? Um, yeah, same, same guy every, what's today? Wednesday? Every uh -huh. Wednesday. Every at, Wednesday. Is it five or six? Six? I think at six. Okay. And then you just come on by and, and just chill. Yep. Have any type of uh, poetry reading? We had a big poetry night with um, uh, my cousin Katrina and uh, One Single Rose. They put on a poetry night. It was really nice. That was the first like real event that, not real event, but that was, that was a, like that kind of event. It was yeah. like really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, in yeah, I think we're going to try to do more of those. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, that's like I said, the poetry. The potential is crazy, like when you have a place, yeah, what right. you can, yeah. yeah, yeah, and so, and so, uh, so you got the Zumba going on, you got the, the young man doing the the, the, med, the uh, soothing sounds, let's say that, yeah, and, and and so then there's other things potentially available, and so do you, how did well, how did how does someone uh, get in contact with you to if they wanted to you know, spearhead a project or see if, if it was possible for them. Yeah, so they can hit us up on our website or they can hit us up on um, our social media on General Baker Institute, uh, Facebook or on their on or the Instagram um, or our email is generalbakerinstitute at gmail.com. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Because I, I'm assuming that you, that you, the, uh, you're not actively looking for people to, to do projects in the, in the building, at least not right now. Yeah, it did. Yeah. You are? I mean, yeah. well, I mean well, it I depends mean, on what it, what the numbers are, like whatever, like if folks want to have an event or something, we just need to know like what the numbers, how many people because of COVID mm -hmm. uh, projects. Yeah. Some people have expressed interest of doing different projects as well. Okay. Um, so no, our calendar is not full. <laughs> right. So you, you're not out looking for them, but if people are coming to you with, with, with ideas, you're listening, mm -hmm. you're actively listening. For that yeah. Of and yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so. About the uh, General Baker Scholarship, how do they get it? Right. Yeah, so that's through U of M, uh, the LSA, uh, what is it, the yeah, semester in Detroit, Detroiter Speak is the name of it, um, and it's uh, the General Baker, it's a General Baker scholarship for U of M students, um, they award a scout, they award somebody every year um, uh, who is, who's taking that program, they, uh, one student, they write an essay, and then there's a, there's a group that reads through the essay and decide who. Okay, and, and so the, the, I know you stated earlier, but I want to go back to the, to the program. So, how did the, the the program? Whose idea was it? Uh, who who decided to, to come up with this idea, this program? Which one? Uh, one of you of them. One of you of So my dad. So one of the students is interesting. Um. So, uh, I, my dad would go there and speak, 
Mm -hmm. uh, there was a professor named at the time named Lolita Hernandez who ran the program and until so my dad would speak there all the time but then after he passed um one of the students decided that and just brought it up to everyone's attention like we should do a scholarship in this name so the folks at um u of m started raising money to make this a, i guess I, I forgot what the term is to make a a scholarship like a yearly thing but you had to raise a certain amount of money to do that and so they were able to do that um and but it came basically came out of the student's idea to do that you know, but, right what, what and so I, I bring that up because we uh, we can't be we can't overemphasize the the reach that your father had because uh, that's no small task for, for uh, you of them to go along with that right yeah <laughs> you go come on now we know you of them yeah <laughs> they might know now and then be like what we got a what <laughs> after seeing this one. <laughs> oh, they, they didn't really they didn't really know what was going on yeah no i don't know <laughs> i asked that question before too like i wonder if they know they got a revolutionary scholarship, a scholarship I'm named sure, after i'm sure they i'm sure somebody researched it somebody yeah even, even if it was after the fact yeah probably but mm -hmm. I, I guess i guess it, but it, what it shows is that the impact that he, that he had on the students right. when he came there to speak. Yeah. yeah. And regardless of whether he's revolutionary or whatever, he wasn't, he wasn't well, I can say that. But regardless of that, uh, it, it, the impact is what's important. Yeah. And, and yeah. so and so he was actually helping helping them learn. Yeah, when you're talking about those small classes, even virtual and all that kind of stuff, that does, it was credited. Yeah, I mean, you know, people they earn credits and, like you said, credited scholarships, and they learned the history of Detroit. It was applied to minor, you know, they could find the degrees that they had it in Black Studies. So it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good thing. Yeah, and so yeah. and and then you were saying earlier about the print shop is that is that you uh, you have your small publications that you put out, as well as any community groups that may want to do something yeah like we did this little pamphlet um uh for the opening it was it's like the evolution of a revolutionary it's a little piece on on my dad and um so it's a little pamphlet the history is a timeline of uh of his life um a small timeline and mm -hmm. the movements he was a part of um and it was, yeah just a little write-up on that and then um we did like and in this building, we have what we, in the bigger room, our international room, we have this red wall of yes. revolutionaries. And so <laughs> basically how that wall came about is um, that it was already painted red. Um, mm -hmm. And then like the young folks who um, have helped with this space, helped it grow, um, they, they came and was like, we need to put make this in, well it was already an international room the idea was it was like we need mm -hmm. to put folks on the wall and so basically it was uh, started by uh carlos and jacinia and they started like painting um images of revolutionaries international okay. revolutionaries and so uh out of, after they started they just started doing it and, and every time someone would come they wanted to kind of add to add value and okay um a little bit of themselves here in this place and right. so uh they helped this place grow and continue to and so they paint images of people and so here's a picture of that right wall. and so and this is all painting so it's only like two or three of them that are freehand uh, the rest are like uh, projected images up but it's still growing and then so this book is called um, done by another person who hangs out, uh, who helped us with this space and is always here, um, is Paul Jackson. And so this was a booklet that he created um, for this place and for people to get a, it's just a little bio, everyone up who's on okay. the wall. So, oh. yeah. But yeah. this was all printed here at the print shop. Yeah, because I was I will see why why you see, you see me looking off is because I'm on the Facebook page, <laughs> and I was looking for a picture of the wall. Yeah, the red wall. 
Right. Here it is. Right, but you already got it, so I can stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was looking at some of the books in your library. I was yeah. surprised that some of my read. <laughs> yeah, well, those folks, those books are from people who, like I said, every, this has been a collective effort. People have okay. helped us make this space what it is. Um, and and they see value in this space and want it to grow and that's how it keeps going right. and so all of everything you majority of the stuff in here is donations mm -hmm. um and so the books are all donations so this is just different collections from people um who wanted to give to the place uh, okay and see it grow i also noticed that the, uh, at the institute they have showers and play areas yeah. for children kitchen. and kitchen yeah, we have the, uh, it's not, it's not a, like, we don't have a commercial kitchen. Okay. Um, um, but we, we do have a kitchen. Um, we have a shower um, one. And yeah, it's different. And Welfare Rights has an office here. Um, okay. Yes, yeah, uh, different, a lot of different, because we, we got it, it was a church. Um, we got it from a church before, like you said, before it was church, it was maze. Um, okay. So yeah. Right, so, so some of the stuff that's there, you got lucky. Oh, a majority of the stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like this chair I'm sitting in, like uh -huh. I said, it was a church. It was a church, right? Oh, was yeah, this is a chair. pastor's pastor's chair. Yeah, I, I was looking at that chair when you when you got <laughs> up to sure go were. you go out the room. I was looking at that chair. Uh huh. I don't yeah. have nothing like that here. And first ladies, <laughs> first ladies' chairs over there too. So those two were left. Um. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> it was a pastor. Oh, she got a nice chair. Is that her office? <laughs> <laughs> it's now a pastor's chair. Oh, okay. Okay. Wow. Well, well oh. there, there you have it. Then. We, we can get that. So. Yeah. <laughs> King and queen. I was already ready to crown it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that was it. That's all that I had. Oh. I'm just I was about to ask somebody that flew out my head when she started talking about that chair. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it looked too comfortable. Huh? Right. It's way too comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I will say, like, yeah, if folks, like, you can look at the Institute stuff, but you can also find some stuff on General Baker, too. There's a couple of videos on YouTube. Oh, yeah, we have a YouTube page, too, um, where we have a lot of videos up. Um and then like, yeah, for folks who don't know, he was a part of the League of Revolutionary Black Workers that was birthed here in the city of Detroit. Um, he was the first person that we know of who refused to go to Vietnam, uh, it was a year before Muhammad Ali. Um, and he didn't just refuse to go, he went down there with the purpose of um, passing the physical. Um, so they couldn't say he wasn't physically fit. He wanted to prove that he was physically fit. And so he passed the physical and when it was time for him to swear in, he said, y'all need to call the police because I'm not swearing into this army. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and so he said, I, I'm not saying that I don't want to fight. He said, I'll fight. He said, but um, basically I, when the call is made to free 12th Street, you know, that's when I'll fight. Um, <laughs> when the call is made to free South Africa, that's when I'll fight. So um, he was very clear that he is willing to fight when right. it's a just fight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, right. So, that's that's cool. That's yeah. Cool. And that and so, was called the September 10th movement. September 10th movement. Okay. Yeah. I know what it is I wanted to ask you. There there were uh, a lot of dignitaries, if you will, at, at the uh at the <laughs> memorial service. Yeah. And uh is is there anybody who you can just shout out if they won't mind you saying their name? Oh man. That, that, um, that, that folks in general might know. Yeah, I'm trying to think who were folks know that was there at his memorial. Well, well, Jimmy Settles, I don't know if folks know Jimmy Settles was there. That was his one of his best friends. But um, at the time, um, John Conyers was there. Uh, Joanne Watson was there. Lots of local politicians were there. Right. Anyone running for an office definitely was there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, they showing up at everything. Yeah, I can't remember. It was just a lot of folks. It was a lot of folks, right? Right, because because I know there were there were quite like I said quite a few, especially local 
well-known local people that, that were there. And I only brought that up because, again, I want to stress the uh, his wide-reaching appeal. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. the, the lives that he impacted anyway. Yeah, it was a circus. It was, what, Memorial Day weekend, too. And um, so it was a holiday weekend, if you could imagine. So, so many people were out of town that they were telling us, like, we're not going to be there. So it was well over 2,000 people there. And we filled up local 600. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people said they weren't going to be there. And then a lot of people showed up. Yeah, well, yeah. But there was a lot of folks who was like, I can't come because they're out of town. Right. And yeah, I was like, yeah. So. Yeah, we're th- live streaming. Well, good, good thing that they weren't able to make it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got there early, so I, I know it was like interviews happening outside the place. I got there early because I knew all of that was happening. I wasn't trying to be interviewed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know how much you love to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. But, so, yeah. Go ahead, yeah. go ahead, go ahead. No, I was about to say his passing was like that too. Um, the night of his passing was the same way. He was up in a lot, you know and talking and uh it was all over well over 50 people in icu room people kept coming whoever knew i guess they were calling people i think like joy and watson all of them were showing up and he was just having conversations like we were um and then eventually went to sleep but it was the same way at the hospital the night before mm-hmm. i mean the, yeah the night before he passed and 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 for those though how long ago was that now that was in 2014 Yeah. Right. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Hey, with him, knowing him, he might say you need to do some more. He's <laughs> <laughs> coming, Papa. Uh, how, how's your mother doing? <laughs> She's doing well. Out fighting still. Um, organizing still. Yeah. 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 Yes. She's doing well. Uh, it would look some. Work never does. Right. Yeah. Some of y'all have seen her on TV. Trust me. Re- fairly recently. Yeah, well, they have their own TV show. What days does that come on? Fridays on TV 33. Okay. Or Maureen. Yeah, at Highland Park Radio. Highland Park Radio. <laughs> TV radio. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I was talking about the ones that, that uh they show on the news. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, then when, we, when we took over the, the, what you call it, the queue line, yeah, she had her walk and everything, got arrested. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then they went to court and and beat them. Beat they won their case too. So right, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. But you know, the, the bottom line is is that General Baker Institute, GBI over on Living Noise. Yes. Yeah. Over there trying to help the folks in the community. Uh anything else you want to share? No, just yeah. If folks are interested, come reach out, come talk. Even if you're not interested, still come see us. Uh, yeah. You never know. You never know. You yeah. never know. You definitely have a lot of service. Yeah. Yeah. And if you ever like, at least like I said, if you need to get your lawnmower checked and you need to waste time, there's a black lawnmower company uh, place right next door. They're not, not just lawnmower snow blowers. And then on the other side is uptown barbecue so if you just need to kill some time in between those two places so you drop, come kick it up. right, right. Drop, drop your lawnmower off yeah get, go get your rib sandwich and then come on over to gpi and let's talk yeah yeah there you go right here not to you of course but you know it'll be somebody there huh? and you will know us from the uh it's the big building that stands alone building in between those two places right without a doubt without a doubt so you got any other questions? Thank you very much, Carolyn. It's been very informative. I Thank you. I definitely want to get that for Zoom. I definitely can't wait for you. <laughs> and I Thank definitely can't wait for y'all to get that poetry read. Yeah. You. Right. You're going to be first up. Uh, you better say it right there at the ghetto coffee shop. <laughs> she asked, well, is you going to read some poetry? Am I going to read some poetry? If I practice, I'm wrong. Okay. I ain't gonna say no. Oh, Spoke, spoken <laughs> word. It ain't just poetry, but anyway. <laughs> but, look, I said it live, so who man, you gonna hold me to it? <laughs> look, we pre- we appreciate you coming on here and, yeah. and keep keep on helping the community. Uh, thanks. And so, people can like and subscribe to our pages too. There you go. Right. There you go. General Baker Institute.
uh, better known as GBI. <laughs> I got the tattoo, GBI. <laughs> <laughs> you still be smoking like a trooper. <laughs> and, you, and you tell them folks over there in the background, we said, hey, don't be I scared. Will. Don't be scared. I was whispering a bunch of stuff to me, but they ain't telling me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. Take, take care. Thank you again. Have take, a good one. Take care. Love you. Virtual Love y'all. Love you. Love you.